for, for three people, uh, it, you know, I, I'm not trying to say everybody should have money, but for three people who are, you know, feeling that it's going to be impossible to uh, to come up with a thousand bucks a month, and if it is impossible to come up with a thousand bucks a month, you shouldn't buy a lease. Absolutely, they, yeah, yeah. So that's just totally what that's just where we stand, and so I'm happy to talk to Stephanie. I'm glad that you guys are talking. Um, I, I actually, as I said, I, I respect what Stephanie is doing a lot, and but at the same time, I I can't. I know she wants to get off the lease, but I I have to have certain things in place before you know I can do that. And so, if uh, uh, obviously as quickly as you can get your thing together, and we can uh, work out whether um, you have a, a group that can that can pay the rent and that can take care of the house, mm-hmm. then. She has to be this, her, her group has to be the ones on the lead, and you just have to, um, I mean, somebody's got to pay the rent. I'm not saying Stephanie herself has to walk up to me and hand me the rent. Right. But I mean, she's responsible for the rent until... Ah, uh, okay. I see, so, I see. It, like, things are coming very clearly, actually, now to me, now that you're... Because I haven't really gotten a chance to converse with her about what happened, but I think I'm starting to figure things out a little more. So. Yeah, that's how, I mean, basically from what I gather, well, you know, she and Anne ended their relationship, and, you know, um, and Anne went all toddler on her. And, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. I can um, I can imagine that it's kind of cra- it can be possible to go crazy out here. There's a lot of um, a lot yeah. of energy. So anyway, I guess uh, I would like you guys to just keep talking and keep me in the loop so I know what's going on. And then basically, uh, my my least preferred option, um, you know, if if they get thirty days behind in the rent is, uh, you know, to start eviction proceedings and all that. And right. Just, I'll, I'll be straight with you. How, it's, just, it's very uh, annoying and stressful. And, and, so what I would really, I, what I was thinking is that it's kind of like a, a chance period for you to, that way that you could feel comfortable that no one's going to ride it out and be ridiculous with an, ev- with an eviction. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out, you know, and... Like you, like you said, the 30 days was, was cool. I would really appreciate talking to Stephanie about it if she feels comfortable giving me somewhat of a chance to accumulate money from myself and other people. Um, I mean, my rent's paid for October um, and November now for another place, but I kind of got stranded out here when I'm in the midst of starting a recording studio and also booking shows for myself, which I can make about a buck to a buck fifty a night, if I can start getting into town more and and more of my friends, like good people, come through that gate and and kind of bless me with a vessel, you know. And I, I that's really really all I can offer right now because I would not be able to have rent by the first. I really wouldn't. Well, like I said, uh, you know that. Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, or however you want to put it, right now that that's the important person to have that conversation with uh, is Stephanie. Um, and I don't know if she, you know it sounds like she's not in any position uh, to pay rent either. Um, and obviously, you know that's that's somebody needs to pay rent, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I need to put that house on the market and, and get the rent for it because that's how the that's how the mortgage gets paid. So, well, so um, so see, there's the interesting thing is property management. I've done a lot of work working for FF FHA and Virginia Housing Departmental Authority. If you if there was a trial period for me to go ahead and get things started, even if it was just two two weeks, while I was getting things started financially, I could very much maintain your property, build it up, and rack up value if you were to end up selling it or renting it out again. Because it's not, I mean, what I've done so far, when they left, it was not in renting condition. No, 
there's no doubt about that. I mean, I told yeah. Stephanie that, yeah, yeah, I'd be to put it on the market, and I said, I can't show the house in that condition. No, absolutely not. No one would, no, no. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I keep talking to Stephanie, you know, and the basic thing is, uh, if you guys, you know, I don't know if she has somebody or you have somebody who can, uh, you know, front her some money to pay the rent, and then as you, as you say, you know, uh, accrue your resources, um, you get them back, or I don't know what you're Right, for right, right. But, and, I, and, and I don't need to know, I'm just saying, um, right now, the way it has to be is that you're there uh, at the pleasure of uh, Stephanie and Ann and Chris, which at this point means Stephanie, because she's, as I said, the only one who's actually manning up, so to speak. And yeah, then, um, right. Um, and so you need to keep communications open with her, and, and hopefully you both keep communications open with me, because I, I, without even, without some kind of plan to pay the rent, I really have no choice but to start the whole eviction thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I understand. I right. totally understand. Um, because I can't, I can't rent it only on, on promise. But I, I'm not saying anything. I, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm totally happy um, to give you a chance to come through. But essentially, you just have to understand that the person who's really giving you a chance to come through is Stephanie. It's Stephanie, absolutely. I've been kissing her feet by a text message. <laughs> Because she could, so, the way that day was handled, she could have had never had me on this property again. That, that, that's correct. That's what I was that's telling her. Jillian that day. I guess when we, when we were talking, I was like, "She's on the lease. Like she can. I mean, and the electricity is still on. Like she didn't have to leave electricity on. You know? That's true. Although if uh, she turned off the electricity and the pipes froze, then that would also be on her side. So Oh, so you think I should winterize? I don't think there's any to winterize if the, if the heat is on. Right. I mean, I haven't use, been using the heat. I've been doing kind of an old, I guess, Indian method of just covering windows with, with blankets and sheets and stuff. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, uh, going, down to, going down to 30 degrees for two hours in the night is not going to freeze the pipes, especially if they're in Cuba. No, so, no. I'm not worried about it for for the moment, but eventually it does get cold enough to freeze the pipe. Right. Um. I. So wh- remember when I was talking about um converting the the power through car batteries? Mm-hmm. How would I go about um winterizing the pipes if I had effectively started to go that method of electricity? Like, would I? Could that somehow heat up the pipes so they wouldn't freeze? Right, right. Yeah, I've got some of that on me right now. <laughs> but, to, but, to go, but to go through the house and find all the pipes, and, I mean, it's probably cheaper just to run the heat for a couple hours every night or something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this hmm. is not... That's not cool. The heat is, heat's a pretty efficient brand new furnace, and it's not... Um, I mean, when you, people say winterize, the, the plumbing, they usually mean... Over the winter. Yeah, to yeah. it out. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, I think totally, I mean, because it's not an electric heat, so it wouldn't be yeah, an electrical no, use. The, the thermostat and the switches that turn the heat on rely on electricity. And I don't think you're gonna, it's not going to be convertible to a DC battery system. So you're going to need something to keep the electricity on, even if you hardly use it. And, right. Uh, and it's actually more efficient keep your thermostat set even if you don't want if you don't want to do a lot of heating if you keep the thermostat set on 55 or 60 what I've been is if you turn the heat off and then turn the heat on and turn the heat off and turn the heat on you're actually when you turn the heat off you're allowing all of the mass in the building to cool so it's not just that the air inside it, the wood in the floor gets cold the sheetrock on the walls gets cold the studs in the wall get cold so then when you turn the heat back on to try to warm up the house, that all of those cold heat goes to cold, all of those masses that are below the temperature of the air you're blowing in, they take the heat first before uh, they take it from the air until the house warms 
up. So you're actually, in terms of energy efficiency, you're better off maintaining a house at a certain temperature than putting the heat on at night and off in the day, which some people try to do to save energy. But what you're doing, because you're allowing that thermal mass to vary widely from cold to hot, you're losing your, your embedded energy. Um, but you can experiment with that and just watch your, your oil consumption. But hmm. uh, you know, I, would, I think your uh, oil's at an all-time low right now uh, in terms of price. So, I mean, in my opinion, the most efficient way um, to keep the house and the water system and everything else is to keep the thermostat on and to let the um, furnace, which is, as I said, pretty new and pretty uh, efficient, do its work and just, like you said, anything you do by covering the windows or anything that keeps the heat in, uh, what, that's obviously a plus. And where you set the thermostat is obviously a plus. If you want it to be at 78 degrees inside, well, that's that cost you. But somewhere keeping it around 55 or 60, if you like it cold. Um, I like it cold. I personally enjoy winter. Um, and that's obviously something else you would have to take up with your roommate. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely, because one of them is super can, frigid. They can, they can tolerate that. But, but you know, I, I think we're basically, you know, uh, understand each other at this point. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I'd appreciate um, hearing from uh, from you and, then, and from Stephanie that you're there with her permission. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, Sort of what Stephanie and her crew are are attempting to do to, to honor their their responsibilities with the rent and whatever you do to help them in that regard, obviously, is probably what they need from you. So right, she really wants um, she really wants somebody to take over that lease, which I can do. I can totally well, take I really that want off the lease. To take over the lease, not just to take over the lease, but to pay the rent. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that to see the only. <laughs> Want to pay the rent? Means. <laughs> right. Um, so, um, and you know, and, and you're being straight, and you're basically saying you can't pay the rent right now. So I, it would be kind of foolish of me to turn the lease over to somebody who flat out says I can't right. pay the rent. I can so, absolutely for a week, you know, while I'm getting everything financially straight, or at least halfway straight, I can absolutely um, make this house more valuable, and in, inside or out. Well, again, I think that those are things that, that um, those are obviously a benefit to me and it will be a benefit to Stephanie and those guys as far as their security deposit. But, but you also need money. I, I'm afraid so. Yeah, I mean, of course, man. <laughs> Definitely. I think we I spoke know. about this the first time we met. You were like, yeah, I can probably take a little bit off of rent, but we're not rich. And I under totally understand that. You need to make money off of this house while you're making plans to possibly make a lot of money off of it later on. I don't know. I think it would be cool if y'all move back to this house one day or something, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've had, well, we've had bunches of ideas over, over time, but for now it's just something that we want to hold on to because, I don't know, uh, we just don't know what, what we might do with it. It's kind of our it's kind of our kids college fund slash retirement all wrapped up in one but anyway listen I gotta get back to work okay. and we've got a good um, communication about this and I'm probably gonna try to come out there on Friday or Monday or something and just cool stick on the place and doing what I can stop and, by uh, randomly and surprise me see that <laughs> see that I didn't just prep up the house and get it clean because I knew you were coming I, I, well, actually, I don't think I have any other way because your phone doesn't have a phone. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that's, that's... Another that's, guy who wants to move in is actually getting into the uh, the rental business. So I think it would be funny for y'all to meet and talk. All right, well, so please, the main thing that I've, you know, I, I'm repeating myself now, but uh -huh. you got to stay in touch with Stephanie and, and you both please stay in touch with me and let me know what's going on because... You know, I need to hear that there's positive movement. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. You yeah. have a great day, man. You Talk too, to Kevin. Later. Have a great one.